Mistrza Świata Federacji IPF w kategorii junior ciężkiej. Bardzo serdecznie witam panią prezydent Federacji IPF, panią Marię Muhammad. Z ramienia IPF walkę tego celuje Peter Wilkins. Proszę Państwa, ten pojedynek został zorganizowany przez grupy Main Event, Ziggy Promotions, Seminar Warriors Boxing i Bullet Noga Promotions, który za to bardzo serdecznie dziękujemy! Go! 
Zapraszam naszego zawodnika z Kirowic, z Polski. Panie i panowie, przed Państwem Tomasz, Tomasz Góral Adamen. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way into the ring from Poland, Tomasz Góral Adamen. Adamen, który powinien wejść w ring tym razem, pamiętaj Pańskiego Polaka. Tomasz wysyłał There's Dennis. We got ADT because I walked in on a burglary once. The physical damage was pretty bad. The emotional toll was even worse. Our daughter had nightmares. What that robber really took from us was our peace of mind. With ADT, we got it back. Every 15 seconds, a burglary takes place in the United States. Help protect your family with a fast alarm response of ADT. A single ADT system can help protect your home from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. When an alarm is received, ADT can call the local authorities for help. And you get this monitored protection, plus great local service, all for about a dollar a day. And only ADT offers a theft protection guarantee. Take it from me. The time to think about a security system isn't after something bad happens. It's before. Call now and save over $250 when you buy ADT's family package. And ask about our new technology, like our keychain remote. ADT, always there.
Welcome to uh, live boxing from uh, the beautiful Spartak Arena in uh, Katowice, Katowice, uh, town in uh, southern Poland. We uh, have a main event here of the evening, and it's uh, Tomasz Jaromek of Poland against O'Neill Bell from the United States. They fight for the right to fight the IBF world champion Steve Cunningham in the cruiserweight division. I'm Werner Castro, and with me is my colleague Steve Holdsworth. Steve, looking at the records, uh, what's your prediction? Well, I'll tell you what, Werner, I'm really excited about this assignment. But the problem we have here is that uh, Thomas Adamek is coming up from light heavyweight, where he was a light heavyweight champion, facing um, a former undisputed cruiserweight champion. Now, that may be the turning point between the pair of them. Plus, of course, a bit of uh, home advantage here for Adamek might just level things up for them but a fascinating contest nonetheless. It's a real cracker. My problem is uh, that I can't get past the uh, knockout ratio of uh, O'Neill Bell. I, I, I'm afraid uh, my, my view is uh, O'Neill will, O'Neill Bell will win uh, prematurely, or not prematurely, early. Prematurely yes. from, from Adamic's point of view. Absolutely, well, he is a good puncher, we know that. He's won 26 fights, 24 of them inside with two defeats and one draw in 29 outings. As for Adamek, well, he's a good fighter. 33 wins, 22 inside, just a one defeat in 34 starts. And, of course, the one defeat was to uh, Chad Dawson in the third defence of his title. Dawson, of course, flying high at the moment, still a champion. Yeah, he just beat uh, uh, Glenn Johnson, didn't he? Yes, the veteran. Yeah, but it's a very cagey opening here from these two men, as you can see, and no one wants to make a mistake early on, Werner. Sure. Um, and I just get the impression here that there's slightly more in the locker um, from O'Neill Bell, at least early on. But one has to think, what did that loss against uh, Jean-Marc Mormek take out of him? Don't forget he'd beaten Mormek previously. Well, I think uh, he, he left a year uh, before he came back uh, to the ring now. Uh, it's a year since he, he lost to Mormek. Uh, and uh, that was a point points loss. Uh, whilst the previous uh, fight against Mormek, that's the one bad last fight he made. He, he won by by, by stoppage. So mm -hmm. I don't think it would have done him a lot of psychological harm. 
Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see about that, won't we? Um, it's certainly a cage opening from these two men. Um, Adal Mech, oh, yeah. I got lovely right there. Sharp right hand from Adal Mech and Bell on the floor in the opening round. Amazing, amazing. So that round has gone as far as the points uh, are concerned. Indeed it is. And this, of course, an eliminating contest, as Vernon said, for the IBF uh, Cruiserweight title going out live on ESPN. It's a knockout promotion in association with main events. So, O'Neill Bell then from Jamaica via Atlanta, Georgia. Used to be guided, in fact, early on in his career by Evander Holyfield. One of my uh, favorite fighters of all time. Well, it's a real hero of uh, many a generation. Again, Alamek uh, with a nice, nice right punch. Well, he obviously possesses some uh, power in that right hand of his, Adamek. I, I actually thought we are going to see uh, two very contrasting styles. Uh, European amateurish style by uh, Adamek and uh, American style by, by O'Neill uh, Bell. Well, we were isn't, isn't the case. No, no. Well, we were chatting earlier to our uh, colleague from uh, Polsat who told us that... Adamek has actually been training with Cuban amateurs. And if he, he thinks if he can uh, reproduce his amateur form over 12 rounds, yeah. he'll beat Bell. Yeah, and uh, Andrei Gmitkuk, uh, who uh, actually trained uh, Golota, Andrei Golota for the 88 Olympics, um, uh, and also the Norwegian amateur team for the Barcelona Olympics, uh, he trained with uh, Adamek. And uh, I think that, that's the well, idea to, to recreate that style, this amateur style, uh, in order to uh, baffle Bell. But uh, it doesn't seem to be that there are these, uh, the styles are that different. Well, you do tend to revert to type, don't you, when the chips are down. Round two, then, of the schedule 12. So, O'Neill Bell, then, on the floor, very briefly, in the opening session. Robert Bird, our referee from Las Vegas, gave him a count. That's and only, uh, only fair. Oh, absolutely. But it wasn't a 10-8 round, I suspect, Vern. No, but it uh, wasn't a heavy uh, knockdown either. It was uh, a bit of a glitch. But of course, he's got the home crowd behind him. He's motivated. Yes. His wife, Dorota, is here. Yes, kind of a former light heavyweight champion. Beats a former undisputed cruiserweight champion. And that is the question. The answer, well, we'll get that at some point during this 12-rounder. Uh, well, up to now he's doing well. That was a 10-8 round, the first one. <laughs> well, Adal Mike there, trying to work to the body. And as you can see here, Bell has got a slight, very slight swelling there by the, the right, right cheek. Yep. Well, tactics seem to work uh, to the extent that Dominic wants to uh, fight him from the distance rather than in fighting. Well, he had 120 amateur contests. Uh, Adamek won 108 of them, which is a very, very good record. Picked up a bronze medal in the European Championships in Minsk as well. And, of course, Bell can't compete with that in the amateur ranks. And, uh, as you know, as we said before, the secret could be that he brings amateur form and amateur style into this particular 12-rounder and maintains it. Well, that, that would be the crucial point where they can see it through. On the other hand, he's got this uh, powerful right hand. And he may not have to wait 12 rounds to win. Certainly. Well, Bell pushing him around here. Well, left hook there from Adamek. And incidentally, we do have three officials at ringside. One from the USA, one from Canada, and one from Poland. And uh, we, of course, we've got an American referee. Now, that could possibly make a difference, although I'm not too certain. Well, not the way the fight is going at the moment. No, Robert Bird was very quick to give uh, Bell the count. There's some referees who will let that go. <laughs> nice right across again from Adamek. I don't think either of them really settled down quite yet, Vern. No, but uh, it's still true to say that uh, the first two rounds are Adamek's rounds. Yes. Well, there's already frustration creeping in here to uh, O'Neill Bell as he lands a right hand there. And he looked awfully frustrated walking forward there with his hands down. 
Things are not going his way. Well, that uh, may uh, spread some activity from him because uh, he needs to do something. He has to rethink his position now. Yes, what's Bell going to do here? Um, he tried to be the aggressor there, didn't he, at the end of round two. Um, paid off to a degree. I think so. Up to now, he's left, left the initiative to uh, Adamek, and uh, I don't think that's the right way of going about it. Yeah, well, the thing about Adamek, he's, he's on a counter-puncher's role here, isn't he? Uh, yes. And that's the problem for Bell. He knows every time he makes a forward move, he's going to get caught. He has to, he has to get him in the... Uh, in the infight and a half distance, uh, distance fighting is exactly what Adamek wants, and that he, he has to actually that was a nice right by by uh, Bell. Indeed, let us see the game. Yep, Adamek took it well. The fight Ladies isn't over yet. So round three coming up, then the scheduled twelve rounder, and a fascinating contest this one. And as uh, Werner said earlier, looking for the right to face the IBF champion Steve Cunningham. Of course, David Hay is the reigning uh, WBA, WBC and WBO champion. Although for how much longer remains to be seen. Low blow there from Bell. Yeah, but uh, that was brought on by Adamek himself because of his holding. What a stumble. But he's marching forward now, oh, Bell. Yes, yeah, so O'Neill Bell trying to take the fight here to Adamek. He knows he can't stand back and get his head boxed off. He's got to put the pressure on. That's right. But as you said, Vern, it's early days. We're only in round three here of the scheduled 12. Long way to go. Good body punching. And of course, Bell approved, didn't he, with that 10th uh, round stoppage victory over Jean-Marc Mormek that he can punch a bit. Indeed. Mormek is a very hard nut to crack. Yeah. Not a huge puncher, but uh, generally pretty uh, but he takes durable, yeah. Well, both uh, Jay getting through with shots, but Adamex was slightly better. Well, that was a very nice uh, punch of the body by, by Neil Bell. Well, there's a bit of kidology going on here from O'Neill Bell now, and uh, they haven't last landed a punch of the last 20 seconds, have they? No, but I mean, he, he realized that he has to change something. I think he's trying out uh, what, what it could be. Yeah. Well, a low blow there, then a right over the top there from Bell. Awkward punch, that. Well, it did, didn't hit him quite with full weight behind it. I tell you something, Vern, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if this round went Bell's way at the moment. But there's still a bit of time, of course, for uh, Adamek to uh, pull things back his way. Nice one. Yes, it's aggression's the key here, isn't it? Well, that's uh, after the opening round, uh, exactly what was <laughs> needed. Oh, a lovely left hook there from Adamek. But also one from uh, Obel to the body of Adamek. Well, it looks awfully cool, doesn't he, Thomas Adamek out there? He trained, trained very, very hard. Went up to the mountains here nearby. He comes from a small place uh, not far from uh, Katowice, Ginovice, in the mountains. And uh, he uh, has really geared up for this find, fight. Well, I tell you what, Vern, I can't make that anything more than a level round. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I would give it to Neil Bell. Fair enough. And it's interesting, isn't it, that uh, Adamek, his father died when he was just two years of age. He was a bus driver, and his bus, his bus ended up in the chasm. And sadly, his father died, and he's, uh, he's been up in a very tough environment growing up, and um, it's done him good. Well, no, it's not done him good, I mean, physically. No, no, mentally, mentally. Yeah. He hard. That was a very nice one. That's the same one. Different Good perspective. Shot. Yeah, body shot from Bell. Left yes. hook yes. from Adamek. Bell has worked uh, quite, quite systematically to the body.
to a very tough upbringing then uh, for Thomas Adamek and uh, looking, of course, to bring every ounce of his memories into action here. We'll see how the fourth round goes, the fourth out of uh, 12. 12 because it's, uh, as uh, we mentioned already, the eliminator, the fight for the right to fight Steve Cunningham for the RBF title. That's right, and uh, well, I went levels on round three. You gave it to uh, to Bell, and that's perfectly fair. Nice right nice. there from Bell. Yes. Well, we did say, didn't we? Aggression could be the key here. He simply cannot stand back and allow himself to be uh, boxed a bit. So once again, uh, yeah, Darmic lands a lovely right there, Vern. Yeah, but again, not the full weight behind the, this this punch. But he, he could see the confidence oozing out of um, Darmic, can't you? Yes, both are extremely fit. Well, Adamek's never going to get a better chance than this. Slightly low blow there again yeah, from well, Bell. Referee warns him for that. Well, the corner there shouting, that's the shot, the right to the chin. And they may well, they may well be right. But of course, it's getting it through effectively, isn't it? Adamek is never lost by, by knockout. Well, and that's interesting. Yeah, the push. But uh, Bell does the right thing. He, he has to get uh, him out of his rhythm. That's right. And, uh, and don't forget, Adamek's only defeat so far against Chad Dawson, who is flying high as a champion. But as he said earlier on, it's, it's the difference between uh, cruiserweight and light heavy, which, which is the key. Yes, he's certainly uh, slightly quicker at Darmek, isn't he? Yes. Oh, that was well, on the glove, wasn't on target. Well, once again, and it's interesting, isn't it, that Adamic appears to have cruiserweight power. And again, lovely work there from uh, Thomas Adamek. The rhythm was his. If he was uh, clever, I think uh, O'Neill Bell would, would do in front again half distance, and, but he, do, he doesn't get there. That's the problem. When he gets to the man, he has to stay there and work. Well, isn't right over the top from Bell. And this is a genuine, uh, intriguing contest, it isn't is it? It is indeed. Uh, you just could see this last, the last uh, situation where uh, Bell tried to stay with him, but he couldn't. Even by slightly illegal means, uh, by yes. holding him. But another very another close round. Tight, very tight, yes. Where would you go? It's difficult. Uh, this time, I actually would go for, for Adame. I don't blame you. It depends a little bit on how you rate the, the aggression. Yeah, well, the if, American if judges... Even, if it is an even round, uh, I think you could justify... I mean, that was a very, very nice right by O'Neill Bell here. You see it again. Uh, you, you could argue if it's, it's even, so the aggression is in favor of uh, Bell. He's been making the, the speed. He, he had the initiative all the way. He, he's dictating the speed. And, well, I've given the first round, as you know, Werner, by uh, a two-point margin to Adamek. Quite right, yeah. um, I gave uh, Bell a share of round three, but I'm still getting four behind me, four gone, and potentially eight to go here, coming out for round five. Yeah, well, I'm slightly uh, more... Slightly closer, in, yeah. Inclined to favour Bell here, but uh, we'll see how it goes. It may not uh, need a points decision. That's yet. very true. So, O'Neill Bell then... The Atlanta-based fighter in the silver shorts against Thomas Adamek of Poland. In the white shorts. And it could uh, go either way as far as the knockouts are concerned. Indeed. Well, Bell, as you can see now, trying to be even more aggressive as this one moves on. He 
has, he has to continue pressurizing Adamic, otherwise it won't work. Yep. It's always difficult to get a points decision abroad, even with two North American judges. But uh, at the end of the day, you can't dispute a knockout. Oh, lovely left hook there from Adama. He took a right, but landed two terrific left hooks. He's 32, by the way, now, Adama. And uh, Bell is older at 34. And he might be feeling his age here now, Vern. So I suspect then that uh, Bell might be on the wrong side of the hill here, but Adamek bang at his uh, physical peak at 32. And of course, now boxing as a cruiserweight. He looks very comfortable, I have to admit. Yeah, the former WBC line heavyweight champion has made a cracking start here. And things might be a little bit too wide for Bell to close the gap unless he really starts to motor. Got through with a couple of shots a moment ago. Well, I'm, I'm afraid I don't, I don't believe in a, in a points victory for uh, Bell. I think it's uh, either punching power or loss. Yes, I understand exactly what you mean. They'll do him no favors here, will they? But then again, why should they? Huge investor, it's been a cracking show, this. In fact, it's been more than a boxing show. It's oh, yeah. been a real show. Real entertainment. Brazilian flavor and uh, local Polish flavor musically. Dancers. Yep, dancing girls. Rappers. And a cracking main event. Well, uh, I'm sorry, but this is another Adamic round for me. It is actually, there's no two ways about it. Oh, a lovely another, right there. Another one, yep. Yeah, from Thomas Adamic there on the bell. He's winning his own points, no, no two ways. You can't get past that. Well, 50-45, Vern. I know you've got it slightly closer. Yeah, but it's uh, very similar. Uh, I'm slightly, slightly more in favor of, uh, of Bell, or near Bell, but uh, nevertheless, Alamak is clearly, clearly winning. And he's actually, even, even under pressure, he's uh, finding his target uh, quite, quite neatly. That's right. And Adame, by the way, won the WBC line heavyweight title. He beat Paul Briggs, lost in his third defense for Chad Dawson. And interestingly, O'Neill Bell beat Dale Brown for the vacant IBF title and uh, then lost it in his third defense to Jean Marc Mummick, the man he'd already previously beaten. So uh, they both got something in common as far as that's concerned. Well, round six, then five in it for me. And Adame in the lead here. I think you've got four in it, Vern, haven't you? That's right, yes. Either way, we've both got that, Adamek winning. I don't think that run will make a difference, no. No, I understand that. You don't think this will go uh, to points anyway. <laughs> intriguing, intriguing indeed. Adamek has managed to snuff out most of what uh, Bell is attempting here. And if he does get caught with a good shot, he tends to come back with not only one, but possibly two decent shots of his own. And that's the perfect antidote, isn't it? Of course, if you ever had uh, one more in, uh, then the opponent you're winning. Exactly. Nice uppercut there from Adamek. And he's got the speed here. He's brought his light heavyweight speed up to cruiserweight and also developed his power. Well, a couple of left hooks there also. He's still scoring. Oh, a nice body shot from Bell. And there was only one in return, and not quite the same quality. Yes, I understand your point that Bell could uh, walk in here and land an almighty punch and possibly finish it. I just get the impression that's not going to happen, Vern. I well, think... Uh, certainly not in the, in the first rounds. Uh, we are nearly in the second half now. And it's gone quickly. Stumble there yet again from Adamek. Yeah, that's easily done. 
And this is so much to do with tactics. And uh, tactically, Adamek has got it spot on. Yes. It's not just the tactics, he's got it spot on. He's got home advantage. And he is extremely motivated. Yes, I can imagine them luring Steve Cunningham to uh, Poland to defend his IBF championship proper. Which won't be an easy task. Uh, Steve Cunningham uh, stopped uh, the young uh, and uh, very talented uh, Mark Hook from Germany. Seven rounds. So that will be a tough one. Anyway, he's got to, got to get past uh, Bell first. Indeed he has, but he's, he's, he's almost halfway to doing that yet, Werner. He is. But a fight is only over at the end. Very true. But Adamek, I've got to say, looks to be head and shoulders in confidence above uh, Bell here. Bell lacks something. Um, obviously, a success. Good work there again from Adamek as yes. the bell ends. Round six, and he's even further in front now. 60-54 for me, Vern. Not yeah. too much no, no, uh, no, in no. it as far as you're concerned. No, no, it's fine. It's, uh, I mean, you, you can see, we mentioned it before, the tactics of Ad Adamek work perfectly well. He gets away quickly uh, from, from uh, Bell, and uh, Bell doesn't stand a chance of actually applying any pressure in the half distance or uh, in fight situation. And the distance boxing, distance boxing which uh, Adamek is producing here, just leaves him short of points. Absolutely right. This As is you right mentioned, the end of the round. mentioned before, it's uh, it's the speed which he's brought uh, with him from the light heavyweight, and he's gained the strength, and that, that's quite quite important. Well, six rounds gone then, six to go, potentially anyway, and uh, I've got six points in it, you've got five. But what it means is, of course, that Bell cannot afford to lose another round, otherwise he does need a knockout to win it. I think he needs a knockout anyway. Also, I get the impression that even if he did put uh, Adamek on the floor, he possibly wouldn't keep him there, and he'll have to. You'll have to nail him to the canvas, I think, to get the win here. But as I say, Vern, you know, I've got him six behind with six to play, and he cannot afford to lose this round. Otherwise, nice, he's got right to win through. by knockout. Yes. yes. And what we don't really know is uh, how good the chin of Adamek is. So far, it looks uh, pretty solid. Well, you don't become a world champion, do you, if you can't take a shot at some point? Yes. The same applies to Bell. Although he was on the floor in the first round. Well, that uh, might have been a combination of uh, several things, but it was it was an early knock. It was an early an early slip. That's all. Just a um, a shock knockdown. Still cost him a point. Indeed. Yeah, we call that a flash, don't we? Indeed. But he he doesn't get to grips with the situation. He doesn't know how to handle that, I think. Yes, Ad, um, Adamek, as uh, my uh, Polish colleague said earlier, um, you know, was, was going to employ amateur tactics here over 12 rounds. And so far, it looks like he's done that very successfully, Vern. Indeed. They, do say, they do say that uh, O'Neill Bell is able to adjust to new situations and uh, think on his feet. Uh, we haven't seen much of it yet. No, not yet. And, of course, uh, Adamek refusing to get down in the trenches here with Bell, he just wants to do things his own way. Keep a bit of distance here, catch him coming in or catch him going away, he doesn't care. No, decent right there again from Bell. But they are, I'm afraid, few and far between. Well, the waiting game doesn't pay for, for Bell at all. Yes, he's completely run out of ideas here. Um, he's got to land one big shot. And he may well do. And Adamek, I've got to say, Vernon, looks comfortable. He does indeed, yes. He oozes self-confidence. He looks strong. And uh, he seems to have uh, actually... Oh. oh, nice one, nice one. 
Cracking punches there from uh, Adamek. A right of the head followed by a lovely left hook. And they had power too. Well, I've got to say, this is possibly the best round so far. Adamek has had, uh, barring that uh, flash knockdown in round yeah, one. Yeah. The best boxing. Yes, well done, well done. Oh, it even looks as if he actually can do what he uh, went out to do and uh, stick it th see it through all the 12 rounds in this style. Well, he, we know he can box at this pace. Um, he's only got another five rounds, of course, to do it for. Uh, we're certainly fit enough to do that. Um, but don't forget, you know, Bell knows this is slipping away from him. And he'll be doing, you know, moving hell and high water to ensure he lands the punch that matters. Whether or not he does remains to be seen. I think he understands the situation. Some cheers words spoken in his corner at the moment. It's all over. It's all over. It's all over here for O'Neill Bell at the end of seven rounds. The corner called referee Robert Byrne over. He's accepted the retirement. Bell knows he couldn't win the fight, Byrne. And sensible, it's over. Sensible decision. You live to fight another. You day and uh, see, see his career on a different level, but uh, it's Adamek who goes through to fight uh, against Steve Cunningham. Absolutely. So there you are then. Thomas Adamek is a seven, well, an end of seven round winner. They'll probably announce it as an eighth round uh, TKO, even though the eighth round hadn't even started, but that's what they're like. Um, and what it means, as, as Werner has just said, is that uh, Adamek earns the right to face Steve Cunningham for the IBF title proper, which I suspect will be here um, at be the Spodek Arena if they in can, Katowice. If they can afford the money, but Steve Cunningham travels, as he proved. He went to Germany and uh, went home with his title intact. Indeed. So a well, terrific win then for uh, Adamek. Tremendous. The crowd loving it. Yes, a very good fight. Uh, interesting fight. Uh, it went slightly against uh, my expectation, I have to put uh, to say, I have to admit. But uh, nevertheless, uh, a brilliant performance by uh, Thomas uh, Aramek. Well, is, Bernard, tell me, is Adamek better than we expected, or was Bell below par? I think uh, Adamek was certainly better than I expected him to be. and. Uh, I don't know whether you could say that Bell was below par. Uh, as I said earlier on, on a in a different situation, you are as good as your uh, opponent allows you to be. Absolutely and, uh, right. Adamek was simply better. Indeed he was. Well, we're getting the official verdict now. They'll say eight rounds. You watch. Of course, yes. So Adam again acclaimed as the winner here and getting applauded also by Bell. Well, you can't say much more emphatically than that, can you? Adamek does, in fact, win prior to the bell for the eighth round. Also, very sporting attitude of uh, Bell, the way he behaved it, uh, to, towards them. And as I have to say, also very sensible as far as his own health and uh, future is concerned. But there was a sense of resignation. Not only did he retire in the corner, but you know, you, you, you saw a sense of resignation on his face, didn't you? He couldn't he, he could get at him. That's, that's the whole point. Yeah, Thomas, Ek, uh, Thomas Adamek was simply too strong and too fast for him, and the tactics went exactly the way he wanted them to go. Indeed it did. So there we are, then. That's the end of our boxing here then, from the Spodic Arena in Katowice. All Thanks, the best uh, from Steve uh, Holtworth and from me. Yep, thank you, Werner. Nice to be here, and, uh, well, let's hope we, we see more of Adamek in the future.